Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for another video. If you are new to my channel, my name is Stephanie. I am a life and relationship coach. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for another video. So this week I want to dive into something that is really near and dear to my heart because I am someone who is empathetic and highly empathetic. And I'm also someone who is highly sensitive and that is fatigue and why we often become so exhausted every day, day in and day out because we have this amazing gift. So for me years ago, I would always complain that I was tired, I was tired and I didn't really understand why I always felt so exhausted. Um, and then once I started learning about empaths and highly sensitive people and I knew, okay, I was definitely one of those people, I started understanding like, oh, this is why I'm tired. And I started to learn how to basically manage my life a little bit better in order to help me to have more energy and not feel so emotionally exhausted and drained day in and day out. Now, before we get started, if you are in the Boston area, I will be in downtown Boston in Back Bay on October 13th. I will be doing a seminar called Empower Yourself. If you are in the area and you would like to meet me and purchase tickets to the event, I will link it down below. Um, I'm super excited about meeting you guys. We already have a ton of people coming and it's gonna be a really great event and it's gonna be my way of really meeting you guys for the first time and learning some really important life skills that will help you to be mentally and emotionally more healthy than you already are. So I am super excited about that. So again, if you are interested, I will link everything down below for you to go and purchase your tickets. So in the meantime, let's get right into this week's video. So one of the things with being an empath is you don't have to be an empath and be someone who is highly sensitive, but most often someone who is highly sensitive is also someone who is highly empathetic as well. So the first thing to understand, and we all know this about empaths, is you absorb other people's energies. So for me, I didn't really understand how severe that was until I really started diving into this type of work and understanding like, wow, like I really do get very drained and exhausted after listening to something, watching something on TV, being around a certain personality. Um, and it really, really affected me. So like we always, like we know about impasse is that you carry not just the load of yourself, which at times that's a load in itself to carry, right? But you also carry the load of other people around you. So when your best friend is talking to you about something that she's going through, you are in it with her. Like you are feeling what she is feeling on that level to a certain extent, but you're very, very invested in situations, in people, in circumstances, you feel just very deeply. So you are the healers. You are the natural givers. You are the people that will always help a stranger on the street who will see, when I was a kid, I would see roadkill and it would just like torment me that this poor animal got hit. I mean, and I would feel it on such a deep level. And I remember my mom like almost being like, oh my God, what do I do with her when she's feeling like this? Because she often didn't know how how to help me through what I was feeling because she is not someone who is highly empathetic or highly sensitive. So because you have this amazing, beautiful gift and which makes you such a loving and caring and giving person, it also has a drawback in that, like I said in the beginning, while you're carrying your load throughout the day, you're also carrying the load of everyone else. So the difficult part about having this amazing gift is this isn't something that you can shut off. This is something that just comes naturally to you. And so it becomes a matter of learning how to manage yourself and manage this gift versus trying to kind of shut it off because it's almost impossible. It's never going to happen. So most empaths and highly sensitive people also have really poor sleep habits. So most of us have very active brains. That's me, I have a very active brain. It doesn't ever wanna really stop. And most of us kinda do, but I do think that there are some people that have more active thinking than others. And usually we are one of those people. So because we have these active brains, it is difficult for us to get a good night's sleep. So for me personally, I know that I am an extremely light sleeper. I hear the birds chirping. I hear the branch breaking off the tree. 
I hear Ryan moving around way down the hall. I mean, I just wake up for any little noise. I also am a person, and you guys, comment down below if this is something that you struggle with too, but I remember mostly all of my dreams. So I will either be up in the middle of the night and I'll be kind of conscious to the fact that I am dreaming and I'll very much be aware of it, or I will wake up in the morning and be able to tell you exactly what happened in my dream. I mean, by mid afternoon, I might start to forget bits and pieces of it. But when you are remembering your dreams, it is because you're not really in a deep restful sleep and you're very much still awake. So because this is how I sleep, it is, I don't often get a good night's sleep. Now, there are a lot of things that you can do to help yourself to get a good night's sleep, and we're gonna get into that later on in the video, but that is something that a lot of highly sensitive and empaths really, really struggle with. So comment down below if it's something that you struggle with too. So the first thing that I wanna get into is learning how to manage your day. And this is important for anyone, regardless of being someone who's an empath or, or highly sensitive. It's just about learning how to take care of yourself. It's just about learning day in and day out, what do I need today? What do I need to give myself today? And that's a question that I try to ask myself a lot throughout the day. What do I need to do to give to myself today to help myself, right? To take better care of myself. What do I need? Do I need to make it a point to put the phone down later on tonight at 1030 and maybe do a meditation? Do I need to go for a walk? Do I need some physical exercise? Do I need to eat a good meal today? Do I need to spend time with Ryan? Like, what do I need today that will really help me to take care of myself? Do I need to listen to some motivational speakers? Do I need to read a book? Do I need to practice self-parenting today? And that's the thing that I'm really gonna give myself today is being really conscious to the things that I'm thinking. So managing your day is trying to give yourself as much as you can every single day what you need in order to mentally take care of yourself and emotionally take care of yourself. So one of the things that you have to accept with that is that you cannot save the world every single day. So not every person in your life that's going through something requires you to get involved in their life and their situation and take on that problem as if it was your own. So learning how to set boundaries is really, really important. Learning how to say no to people, learning how to put yourself first because you know, I always say putting yourself first is not a selfish thing, but even more so with someone who's an empath because because you are that natural giver and you want to help and help and just heal people and help people and make the world a better place, it causes you to feel very, very exhausted throughout the day if you have this huge weight on your shoulder of you trying to save everyone and help everyone and do everything for every single person in your life and never doing it for yourself as well. So the next thing is rest. And I know we kind of touched on that with sleep, but really what rest means is, and it kind of goes into self-care, managing your day, giving time for yourself, but rest to me is taking a snooze. It is closing your eyes for 15 minutes. It is shutting off social media and technology and just kind of like being still for a minute. I know that a lot of empaths and highly sensitive people love alone time. So again, I wanna hear down below if you are an alone time person and you need that quiet. Cause I know for me, when I'm home, either if I'm working or if Ryan's gone and I'm getting some alone time, I very rarely even have the TV on. It's almost like I'm just doing things throughout the house and I'm just by myself and I'm just enjoying myself that I don't even wanna hear anything because it's like another distraction, it's another noise and it allows me to not fully rest and recharge. So let me know down below if you guys struggle with these same things as well. The next thing, and I think that this is really important, is starting to decipher whether the energy you're feeling is yours or someone else's. So, so often because it's very easy for us to take on energies that we sometimes don't understand, you know, why all of a sudden am I feeling depressed? Why all of a sudden do I feel really stressed out? When you might've just gotten off the phone with someone who's going through something themselves and you didn't realize that you just took on that energy and now it's drained you and now you're living in the space that that person was living in. So being very mindful of like, I'm feeling this way right now, but is this really my stuff or is this someone else's? 
for me, I that was like a game changer because I realized, wow, I actually don't feel depressed. I feel depressed because I just was with this person all day long and they're going through something really difficult, but I actually feel fine if I really am truthful and authentic with myself that I feel pretty good, but I might feel crappy because I just was in this situation or I was just around this person or I just heard this story and it really, really affected me. The next thing, and this is like really basic, but when I tell you it's huge and I actually really want to get more into this stuff, not necessarily going into like a whole new nutrition thing towards my coaching, but I do think that it's so important, especially because I am someone who is highly sensitive, that you are what you eat. So I am very, very affected by caffeine. I am affected by lots of sugar. I am affected by certain foods. Um, not just environments and you know things like that crowded places we tend to like take on energies and it could be a little bit of an overload for us but really the foods that I eat a thousand percent affect my mood if I'm not getting enough fruits and vegetables and nutritious food in me especially magnesium and I've talked about this a lot on my channel I take magnesium not daily but I would definitely say three or four times a week I actually buy it, you can buy it at Whole Foods, you can get it on Amazon, um, it's in a powdered form. I'll actually put the, here it is, I'll put it right here for you to see. Um, but I buy this stuff and I put a teaspoon of powder in a large thing of water and I drink it throughout the day. Magnesium is a very, very important vitamin because it actually calms your nervous system down. So if you're someone who's highly sensitive or someone who's empathetic and you can tend to be like jittery if you have coffee or you know you just take on the world sometimes and it really, really affects you, learning how to regulate your body naturally or just give your body really what it needs in order to regulate itself and help itself. Um, for me, that was really huge when I started learning about nutrition and learning about like what are the things that work for me and the things that I know I need to incorporate in my day-to-day -day diet. And the last thing that is really huge is knowing your limits. And for me, this is something that yeah, I try to do, I really try to do, but I am also a doer and a task person and I do have my own business and I love what I do and I love being with my son and I, I just love life sometimes, I guess. And so I wanna like do and be and go and all of these things and by the end of the day, I'm completely wiped and exhausted on like times 10 level. So knowing your limits, knowing what you're capable of, giving yourself that alone time, giving yourself that time to rest, learning how to balance your day a little bit and manage, okay, today's gonna be a, stre a stressful day at work that I'm 100% gonna give myself some time later on tonight. Or if I can't give myself some time later on tonight because the kids have this and I have to go here and this is this or whatever, I'm definitely gonna do it tomorrow. I'm gonna give myself a Zen day. I'm gonna go do acupuncture. I'm gonna go for a workout. I'm gonna do some cooking and baking in the kitchen. Like whatever it is, whatever the things are, for you that help you to unwind and kind of get back and really like feed your soul, right? And like get back to that calm and peaceful place. So I hope that you have enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I will see you next week.